Now, before you freak out, do I think Eddie Edwards is a jobber? No. He's one of the best wrestlers of the company, one of the best wrestlers in the history of the company. He's one of the faces of the company. He's a long timer. He's a lifer. Do I think he's a job or no? The point of this segment here, let me give you a little, little backstory. I was streaming my review of the past episode of Impact, and probably about 75% of the way through, my computer completely froze on me. I'm not going to redo the review. I'm not going to review the stream. I had some good points that I've made and some good points that I was going to continue to make, but I'm not going to re-review the episode. It was a good episode. I was very turned off in the beginning by the first time ever and wheel in the night and shit. And I just want all that to be over. Well, first time ever probably won't end anytime soon, but I wanted everything to be over and just the TNA era to start. Cause I'm, you know, the way that impact produces television has never been, been my favorite. I thought it was going to never change and it's going to change. And that's what I'm waiting for. But one of the points that I had made, Eddie Edwards has this match with Eric Young. And going into this match, well, let's let's rewind a little bit. Eddie just finished a feud with Frankie Kazarian. It was a feud that was never going to end, it felt like. But it wasn't one I was necessarily complaining about because I really like I really liked watching the two of them wrestle. But it was going on forever. There were several times during the feud where they said, okay, this ends now, and then they wrestle again the next week. But Eddie ultimately lost, and any wins he did have in that thing, they weren't, I don't think they were clean. I don't think any of them were clean. Maybe the first win. But if you notice, like, with with Impact and their booking, the the, the babyface does not, excuse me, the heel does not win the feud, ever. Look at their champions right now. Alex Shelley. uh, Who we got? Chris Saban. Tommy Dreamer. Trinity. Bullet Club. The Death Dolls. Not the Death Dolls. I'm sorry. Sorry. MK Ultra. How many heels you see up there? They're going into the new year, all babyface champions. Heels just don't win feuds. And if if uh, if a heel wins the match, they're just going to have a rematch until he loses, ultimately. Which is where Eddie Edwards seems to be on the spectrum every single time. So he loses to Frankie Kazarian. And then he, this guy never has a program for Bound for Glory. He's always in this gauntlet. Um. He gets eliminated from there. Goes on to wrestle with Will Ospreay. Loses. And then Impact has the nerve to show the highlights of him losing. Bringing up the point that he lost. And this is, you know, previous to his match with Eric Young, who eliminated him in the gauntlet. So Tom Hannafin lets us know, well, Eric Young and Josh Alexander beat job culture at turning point or whatever it was. It was the UK tapings. I don't really know. I didn't watch them. Eddie Edwards lost to Will Ospreay. And that's how they hype up the match between the two of them. And then they have a pretty decent match and Eddie Edwards loses. So you're going into the match hyping up the fact that one guy is a winner, the other is a loser, and then he just beat the dude again. And it feels like forever since we've seen Eddie win on screen. And ever since they they, uh, incorporated Alicia into his gimmick to where now she's a full-blown heel, the dude doesn't seem to win. I don't remember what the feud was prior to Frankie Kazarian, but he lost that too. And I remember it was kind of weird because they were just... You know, actually, it might have been the very beginning of uh, the Frankie Kazarian stuff. 
it was the first match, I believe, where she comes in as a heel and, and he just loses. So he won the the little back to school match or whatever, and you know, and the killer impact match. These 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 are great matches, but my concern is that these guys who are here for the long haul are the ones who just end up on the losing side that ends up with the loser's purse, if that's even a thing. So you look at the Sammy Callahan's who now is gone. Uh, Rich Swan, I wouldn't say he loses all the time, but you know, has he been a winner since the world championship? I I think he's the next one to go. I hope not. I feel like he is. Um, Moose, thank God, is is kind of treated more of a part timer on screen. But it does seem like some of the people who are just kind of here aren't the ones that get to hold the titles, and they aren't the ones who win the matches and win the feuds. Now, this feud with I don't, I don't even want to call it a feud. I'm sure it's gonna. I'm sure him and Eddie, or excuse me, Eric Young are going to have a program. I'm pretty sure of that. Based off, I knew that based off when Eric Young eliminated him in the gauntlet. I just knew that's what they, what they were going to do. They use matches like that to start feuds. But then this is the first new episode of the year. Excuse me. One of the last episodes of the year, but the first one after Bound for Glory because they were doing the UK stuff. And then they just give us the match. And, uh, you know, we already forgot at this point that Eric Young eliminated him. So why not take a couple weeks? You only got two episodes before the end of the year, before you phone it in with the turkey suit and the uh, IPWF and all that and the highlight show and the best of and the awards. Before you phone it in, you only got to knock out two episodes. Why not take an opportunity to build something special between Eddie Edwards and Eric Young for Hard to Kill. When this match started on the episode, immediately we got the TNA, TNA, TNA chance. Meaning it was something people wanted to see and they were they were reminded of the TNA days by these two being in the, in the ring together. And they just gave it to us. After completely forgetting why they even had an issue with each other. Wouldn't it have been more impactful, more powerful if you just kind of built something up over the course of a couple weeks? They don't even touch. They're not even in the same room. And then the pay-per-view comes, and these guys step in the ring for the opening match. Not your X-Division fuck fest. Like, Eddie, Eric Young, two good workers, kick off hard to kill. They stand in the ring. They soak it in the TNA chance. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I would have rather happened. Would have, Eddie have still potentially lost? Yes, but now he loses really unnecessarily And what I would imagine is one of the lower rated shows of the year. I haven't seen the viewership. And then you cannot heat him up before Hard to Kill because Hard to Kill damn near starts the new year off. Not really. It's a, it's a few weeks into it, but um, I just think you could have taken the rest of this year, maybe a couple video packages, and then if you know the first couple episodes of the new year, if you want to get them in the ring together, face to face, or or do something, but elongate this story to make Eddie seem important after you've you've beat him a couple times in a row, three times in a row. You know, maybe we can forget that if you don't just put him in the damn ring again right away. But, you know, my, my overall point is that I would have liked to have seen this match at Hard to Kill, open the show, build it up a little bit. But also, when's Eddie going to win something? Even as a honor no more leader, almost immediately when he came in, they started losing. So where does Eddie get his? Where does he win? Where did they get back to the guys who have been here long time?